You're not going to last very long in my company, are you? <laughs> okay. I have my own company. Did you see the slides? My name's on the oh, slides. Oh, sorry, yes, ROI. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, if you keep treating me this we way, are not going to have a very quick. Uh, we are going to have a very quick business relationship here. You better read okay. your contract here. I am about to hit you with a couple change orders that it's not going to make you feel very comfortable. You keep treating me this way. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Well. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Beyond Deadlines podcast, where we tackle challenges that planning and schedule leaders come across on a day-to-day -day basis. My name is Micah Pipo, and I'm a planning and scheduling manager for Intel. And my name is Greg Lawton. I'm the CEO of an AI schedule management company called Nolton Links. Each podcast is designed to give you tactics and strategies that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis. On today's show, we have something interesting for you. We are going to do a hypothetical project update. We have some slides to present. I am going to be the project updater, and Greg is going to be the executive I'm presenting to. Greg, what's your thoughts on project updates? Um, project updates to me are like, it's almost like mini board meetings where um, I want you to get to the point pretty damn quickly. Um, I will choose if I want to know more because the thing with project updates is you normally have an update day. So you're hearing lots and lots of different project updates and you're diving down into different levels of detail and you, oh, I as in the executive, have a broad view of everything that's going on. So I know what's commercially important, what's technically important. Individuals coming in for a project update, I'd say, get to the damn point. Tell me what I need to know, and then allow me to choose if I want to go deeper. Definitely have the backup stuff if I want to go deeper. Do not tell me war and peace. Tell me how you were born. Tell me, you know, how your childhood was. And then eventually uh, your employment history. I, I don't care. I have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> That almost reminds me a little bit of uh, interview questions when you ask the person, tell me a little about yourself. And maybe it's their first couple of interviews and they're like, well, I was born in Chattanooga in, in 1994. And you're like, oh, this is going <laughs> sideways. Yeah. I think project updates are very much the same. I would agree with you. Get to the point. To me, when we were talking about this earlier, and you'll probably see it in these update slides we're going to go through, you have to have a point of reference. You can't tell if something is good with a single point of data or a single line. There needs to be, uh, we are this, we're comparing it to that, and that is good and bad because. I, I think that's probably the biggest one I see missed on project status updates. Outside of I, the overwhelming detail, overwhelming language, not getting to the point, it's how do you compare and contrast things to show this is where we're headed and things you need to be looking at. I agree with that, and you, you've actually given me you know, the, the second thing, these are kind of my main ones, is do not use unspecific language. It's going well. What the F does well mean? Like, I, I also, uh, on, a, on non specific language, saying something that the pitcher tells you immediately. So we completed 3,000 activities this month. Yes, I can see that in the chart. Yeah, yeah, I can read, I can read the chart. I can read the chart. Thank you very much. Like what, tell me something that is of relevance to the decision that I need to make. Because that, that's actually the fundamental thing. Why are, you, why are you in an update meeting? It's because someone has to make a decision. So what yeah. is the decision that they're trying to make? Well, you know, for example, in our hypothetical, I'm, I'm going to be trying to make the decision. Do, is there a problem that I need to intervene in? That's really what I'm trying to make the decision on. So you could start with that. You need to intervene. We have a problem. I'm like, amazing. This presentation is already incredible. Tell me what yeah. the problem is and why I need to intervene. Yeah. Yeah. Completely, completely agree. After seeing so many of these, it also goes, it reminds me, it goes back to, we did a work from home episode, I believe, when we were talking about project reporting, 
to me, I'm almost with some of these meetings, if there is no need to intervene, if you know your stakeholders well enough, if you know their action triggers and the things they're able to do, and in some crazy land, things are going well, let's just shift that to offline. You know, if you have the purport dialed in and there's no action, because then people sometimes always find action and then you're chasing stuff you shouldn't be chasing and potentially wasting cycles that could be used elsewhere. And that's where the project update always sits with me. And there's a lot of them where I'm, I'm like, does this need to be a meeting? Uh, could this be either directed towards offline or if it's action workflow related? But that's mm -hmm. a, that's a whole nother uh, conversation. I think that's for another, another topic because I'd, I'd, I would say I, I agree with a caveat that sometimes the process of questioning and discovery uncovers um, unknown unknowns that the team did not realize were problems. And it really only comes by from having a, a passionate, dispassionate observer force it through KPIs and things like this. So if, if someone said, we're on time, there's no need to intervene, be like, wonderful, prove it. Like, give me the KPIs. And they're like, change is under control, progress is in line, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, okay, right. You, you've proved it to me. But yeah, right. someone coming in well, and going, no need. I'd be like, okay. Without yeah. further ado, let's get into this. I'm excited now that we're all warmed up talking about project updates. <laughs> we're going to hope for the best here, folks. By the Mr. way, Greg, we, we, we renamed Micah in this. Uh, Yes, I can see. I can see a presentation by Chad Brachill. <laughs> yes. It's good to meet you, Greg uh, Lawton, Senior Executive Advisor uh, to Arawai Industries. My name is Chadwick Brachill, and I'm providing you the status update today. So as you can see, uh, we're comp these are activity starts, and this is our project. It's going from January to December. And these are the activity starts that we're doing. Any questions? Is is this a, is this just a forecast? This is the actuals and the forecast. I believe we're in the month of June right now, and so everything after June is what do you is, mean? This is, the is actuals forecast. And the forecast. There's a single bar graph for both. Like, what is it? Some of the both. Some of the two. It's actuals, and then it goes to forecast. Okay, where does it go to forecast? I'm, I'm just seeing the same color bar graphs the whole way through. In July. In July. So July. So July is what an actual or a forecast? Uh, Ju July is a forecast. And June is actuals. And June is actuals. And okay, maybe so for this? the people on the call, Greg Laden, senior executive director at Alawali Industries, maybe you can describe what you're seeing. If, if people are listening on Spotify yes. and not watching what, the video. What I'm seeing is a bar graph that goes from January to December with values ranging from about 250 up to 2000, randomly scattered across the screen, and they're all the same color. And the key just says that the blue is activities. So I've got activities. There's no title. There's no context to the graph. I can just see that in August, there's apparently over 2000 activities. And what Char Chadwick has just told me is this is a mixture of actuals and forecast with no definition in the, the, the graph of what is which and what is baseline. So to be honest, Chadwick, go home and try it again. I've no idea what, like, I'm, I'm going to have right. to spend more time asking you questions on this than just saying, please go back and try harder. Okay, Mr. Mr. Lawton, if you could give them three bullet points that you'd want them to walk away with this today, uh, what would they be? Number one, tell me what I'm looking at. Number two, tell me the decision that you, I need to make. Number three, show, show the data properly that enables me to make that decision. Okay. All right. The team has, Chadwick and his team has left in tears and sadness. <laughs> And they've came back with you with a, an update. So let's see okay. if we can get to it. So Mr. Mr. Lawton, we heard your advice. We took pretty much none of it, but we tried to improve. Here we have activity starts 
and I've separated out now the forecasted starts from the actual starts. And it looks like to me, we're starting to trend off of our forecast starts. So the project might be getting late. That is our update. Thank you for your time. You're not going to last very long in my company, are you? <laughs> okay. I have my own company. Did you see the slides? My name's on the slides. Oh, sorry. Yes, ROI. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, if you keep treating me this we way, are not you're going to have a very quick. We are going to have a very quick business relationship here. You better read okay. your contract here. I am about to hit you with a couple of change orders that it's not going to make you feel very comfortable. You keep treating me this way. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, so what I'm seeing on the graph now, it's changed from a bar graph to a line graph, and you have separated out uh, the forecasted starts, but in the graph, it's called starts, not forecasted starts from actuals. We won't dive into the fact that these are starts and not durations or completions or finishes or anything like that. There is no text. There is <laughs> there is no Bank key on this can't diagram. be choosers. Yes. And, but you have voiced over and said, it looks like we're going off. Okay. I, I'm going to work with what I've got here. Chadwick, so what? How does this impact me? If we keep trending the way we're trending and missing those forecasted starts, you know, one could assume we'd probably be eventually be late. You know, I can't tell you how late, uh, but, you know, being a, a good uh, contractor next week or next month in July, we're going to catch back up to that and we'll be fine. For everyone who is listening on a podcast, I just had a very long blink as I process the <laughs> anger that's building inside of me at this point. <laughs> you like how fictitious scenarios can kind of make you like really uncomfortable. It's like when you're watching a so TV show angry right now. <laughs> and there's and there's like an awkward character and he has nothing to do. He's never you've never dealt with in your life or whatever, but you're watching this like train wreck happen on screen and you're yep. cringing inside. Me presenting that, I I'm I'm cringing at myself having to present this but you know what someone has to fall on the sword audience members this is for you if you like this stuff please subscribe i'm happy to get on here and do more cringeworthy stuff like reporting these amazing graphs okay let's leave that there and please just do better uh before i have an aneurysm all right how about uh out of the stuff you already have mentioned is there any new bullet point that you would maybe one or two I would, just I would quick add ones. A, so if I was to give a general framework here, it's tell me, tell me what's happening and tell me the consequence. And then under that, justify it with data. So that is fundamentally what we're going after here. There's no, you voiced over and in your response, you said, I would assume that we'll probably be like, but well, we'll make it up. I'm like, so you voiced over what's happening loosely yeah. you made a guess at a consequence as opposed to you know as opposed to saying i don't know what the consequence is <laughs> like you actually, it's even worse that you had a guess oh <laughs> uh, yeah and then there was this crap graph on the screen well, I, the color scheme is kind of nice though <laughs> all right final graph yeah. here we go let me see if i can get it there okay so uh, Mr. Lawton, mm -hmm. we have took your advice and we want to do better and we really are trying to meet the client's mm -hmm. expectations. So looking at the advice you provide us, we have came back now with this third attempt. Okay. What we are saying is that due to our inability to complete activities on time as planned, and this is specifically activity starts, there's a lot of data you can pull in a project. You can pull starts, finishes, and durations. However, we're keying off of starts because it's the most readable data. We have durations and finishes in the backup if you'd like to dial in there later. What we're noticing is that we've trended off course significantly based on our starts. You can tell that by looking at the end of our actuals is the red line here, mm -hmm. right here. And you're seeing a peak to where our forecast starts in July. So we have created a snow plow where we need to massively catch up on our activity starts, and we're just not quite getting there. It's unlikely that we will get there noticing this gap. This is basically going from, you know, a, in the a couple hundreds and a couple thousands activities to a much greater jump. 
So what we are looking at as a timeline that's going to be pushed out. Now in later slides, I'd like to provide with you three solutions that we need your help with mitigating. And to pull the punches on those, we need to add in an overtime shift. We need to speed up some critical procurements. And we also need to start looking at what our contingency usage are in this project. Because I think one of the things you said at the beginning of our project was uh, on time delivery and predictably was the most critical aspect of it. And while we may not be able to hit the initial finish date, we can make this project more predictable based on what we're seeing out in the field. Wonderful. Based on your simulations, if, uh, if we did nothing and didn't implement your three actions, what is the delay that I'm facing? It's an excellent question. If you look at how these curves are starting to trend, we're looking at about a three to four month potential delay. Okay, and if we implement those mitigation actions, what is that reduced down to? We can trim that down to two months, but we're still looking at a month over, and that's where I mentioned the uh, utilization of contingency, potentially. Okay. How much contingency do we have in the budget? We have exactly one month, and we'll deliver this project on time. <laughs> Okay, Boom. so we're cutting, it very, <laughs> we're cutting it very, very fine. And these mitigation strategies, give me the mm -hmm. top line. How much is it going to cost me? The top line, well, we've ran our analysis on adding the extra shift. You know that it's mostly focused on mechanical uh, and electrical, and that's going to be a $1.5 million add. We have cost contingency in the bucket, and we knew this was a risky project going into it. That's what we talked about at the beginning. So we did add contingency in for overtime and double shifts. So it would be a, uh, you know, a smart use of the money. We're also starting in, in, in now in the meat and potatoes of the project where overtime and double shifts are going to be the most efficient. Got it. Um, final question before we dive into a bit more detail, because I'd want to kind of really understand this. Um, second to think about this. Do we ever explain the chart to the, to the crowd? I can explain it while you think. Yeah, explain it. So in this, uh, for all those listening, the chart now has a, on the left side of the chart, it has words to it and bullet points. So it says delays likely, and it has three points that, that I previously discussed. Now in the chart, you have three lines and each three lines are, are labeled forecast starts, actual starts and baseline starts. So you have a little bit of a more complete chart. Again, you could make this far better, uh, but we just kind of riff this up before the episode for our hypothetical. Mr. Greg, uh, I thank you for answering that emergency call that you had to take. Any final thoughts before we close this meeting? Yeah, I've, uh, I've got a question if I may. So you said that we're, we're essentially going to burn all of our scheduled contingency, even if we make up the, the time uh, can you please explain to me, give me a quantification of what my liquidated damages are for each month of delay? Quantification of our liquidated damages for each month of delay. Uh, two, two million dollars. <laughs> okay, so it's well. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm hearing is that it's more than the the one point one million you said it's going to cost uh, me, I see, and that I see gives where you're me going. two months. So I'm, I'm thinking here because. People, isn't this, I'm fine to accept some delay. This is actually a key thing in contracts. Contracts can say anything they want to say, but unless there's a consequence for me in doing it, I don't care. Yeah. So in this sense, you, you have essentially told me that my cost of delay is 2 million a month, and you've essentially told me it's 1.1 million for two months, which makes it a 550K cost. So I'm spending 550K of my contingency to not have to pay 2 million. Now, what I would do in the deep dive is get into how probable are these uh, cost contingencies are in mitigating that, because I'd need very high certainty that they would mitigate this level of delay. Otherwise, yeah. I might just take the 2 million on the chin. And because the 2 million has zero, at the moment, has zero risk associated with it. The only caveat I would add there is if you are 100% sure that those LDs will be enforceable mm -hmm. and that you are not the source of delay. Yeah. In a There's... lot of different projects, if the owner starts buying equipment, if it's uh, different sorts of, uh, you know, companies or uh, 
uh, delivery structures, a company could be sitting there just waiting. Oh yeah, this wasn't my fault. So you want to make sure if that was banking your strategy that that you're you know ready. Exactly, to and this actually comes full circle for all of the listeners. The presentation isn't the relevant bit. The presentation is to get to the meat of the problem as fast as possible so that we can have these level of conversations. Because essentially what what you've just told me based on this data is we're looking at a three-month delay. We have a potential, so the team has come up with potential for two months of acceleration, and I've put a month of contingency. I'm still paying for it in some way there to even it out. You said that my LDs are two million a month, and currently the cost of implementing a two-month acceleration is 1.1 million. But I have strategies around. So for example, strategy A is I'll do nothing and take it on the chain. Strategy yeah. B is I could invest in these risk mitigation strategy actions. Strategy C is I try and make it not my problem. So I'll be like, oh, well, uh, supply chain director, please, have you got anything where we can pin this on anyone else? Etc. And yeah. you see how this is the conversation that needs to happen, but I need to be able to go straight back to Chadwick Brasson or whatever you're called and basically say, like, would this fly? Is this data accurate? Which is why yeah. you need the data sitting behind it for me to drill down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think this is a tipping off point for in a project like this, a, a much deeper conversation. But for people out there presenting that schedule data, getting in this sort of mental framework of well, what are Greg's needs? What is he looking for? What is he thinking about? And trying to future anticipate those. You'll just overall create a much better chart and a much better presentation. So with that, I'll, I'll flip it around for one because we don't have a chart of this, but given that... Greg's okay. in solution mode right now. He's a he is a dog yeah. on the hunt trying to oh, trying to get this fictitious <laughs> project salivating you, on the lips. Yeah. He just watches the steak fix restaurant. projects. That is our passion. But I'd come around and go, all right, right, now it's not Chadwick, now it's Micah. Forget a slide. Um you 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 and I have offices next to each other. You go, you've just realized a problem. You pop your head in. What would you actually say to me? But before I pop my head in, uh, there's going to be a lot more data and research to be done to ensure that this is a real problem. You cannot take simply just activity starts on a top level and, and really have a thoughtful conversation mm -hmm. about it. So I'm going to start peeling some onions. I'll do starts, I'll do finishes. I'm going to break them apart by uh, work area, probably through WBS, trade level, through different trades if that's possible. Uh, I'm going to look at duration. I'm going to be analyzing the critical path. Uh, and, and so I'm going to get a more comprehensive understanding of the exact issue that's at hand. I may even pick up the phone and talk to some of the people, boots on the ground, you know, some trades out in the field, key subcontractors. This is what you're seeing, looking at progress photos. Because when you start going down this path, the best thing you can do is do this sorts of research and analysis of data because next month is going to bring around a similar scenario. And then you can even benchmark off your own assumptions. So as I walk into that room and I'm like, hey, Greg, these are the sorts of things that I'm seeing. I'm actually seeing that across the board, we're totally off and it's dealing with the electrical subcontractor where we're one we're not giving them the equipment they need to be delivered on time. We've had delays there. They're not getting the resource uh, levels they need. And because of that, we're now seeing these delays, right? And I can, if we're not resource loading the labor schedule, I can actually get actual headcount on site to go validate that mm -hmm. um, based on previous assumptions. And then I'm going to say, you know, I would recommend this, that, and the other based on that sort of deep dive. And then the best part is, since I've done all that research and homework, even if you come back to me and say, I don't think it's that big of a deal, Mike, they're going to catch up next week. Cool. We'll roll it forward a month and I'll come back in. But now I've already had all that data and research up to that point done. I just need to do, you know, update three data points and then be like, oh, Greg, you're either right or you're wrong. Let's go, uh, you know, and I'm really focusing also on the solution piece of it you know i'm trying to bring in solutions and ideas to solve the problem not just here's the big problem i'll probably be what i would do i i and that for everyone 
is a masterclass. What I would add to that is to answer the question directly of what would you say if you pop your head in? I would probably advise you don't. Yeah. You don't just yeah. pop yeah. your head in to a senior executive and say, you know, there's a problem or anything like that. What what you might do is go, you know, if I was popping my head into Micah, Micah, um, I need you for 30 minutes this afternoon. I need potentially need your authorization to spend 1.1 million of contingency to mitigate two months of delay. I'd like 30 minutes of your time to give you a 15 minute overview and a presentation. I'm going to have the supply chain director and the risk manager there who I've validated these mitigation strategies with. And at the end, I need you to make a decision on whether or not we progress. Do you have 30 minutes? I've already checked with your EA. It looks like you do around 4 p.m. That's what I'd say. I wouldn't, don't even entertain the subject in a passing by. No, this is definitely not an appropriate elevator conversation. Hey, Bill, what'd you do this weekend? Oh yeah, by (laughs) the way, give me $1.1 million. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You're probably going to be feeding this information up the pipeline anyway. So this wouldn't be, you know, a total band-aid rip off smack in the face, hopefully. And maybe there are situations where that does sort of, sort of thing happens. Maybe there isn't controls in place. Well, this kind of stuff, what you're talking about, this isn't a, um, you know, you've actually turned what could be a, the worst thing the worst thing is uncertainty the worst thing is there might be a problem but i don't really know like you and i know that with these projects contingency is there for a reason and it is yeah. expected quite a lot of project controllers even have contingency burn down graphs because they expect it to go at a certain rate and yeah. knowing the staff have identified issues and have found mitigation strategies that are within that budget it's just the definition of competent people. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Well, Greg, Executive Chairman, Mr. Greg Lawton, any final any final thoughts before we wrap this uh, this little experiment up? Um, how the big one that I'd like the listeners to pull away from this is how you present your competence is how you will be interpreted. So, um, I would think very deeply about any opportunity you have to present a cross project because that is one of the major mechanisms you've got for one getting advice on how to learn and develop which is someone else paying you to become more valuable and the second is uh, opportunities for being spotted for promotion so you know, I, I take any kind of presenting like this incredibly seriously, not not because of the egotistical elements of it, but because the actual entire role of project management is about instigating action in others. That is ultimately what everything in project management is about. So being unbelievably competent at instigating action in others means that people correspond you with being unbelievably competent at project management. Those are excellent points. The other thing I would add is if you know the presentation's coming up, practice the presentation. Mm -hmm. Practice your delivery. Go through, make sure you have your bullet points down, your notes down, even if it's just a weekly or monthly project update. A quick run through in front of the mirror will make you more fluid in speaking and help you to present more clearly. You present more clearly and you're more prepared. You're going to be more confident. The more confident you are, people will trust you more. And that's just going to snowplow and build and help you out later and later in your career. All right, folks, thank you for listening this week. We really, really appreciate it. If you could do one other thing for us, actually, I'll say maybe two. Subscribe to wherever you listen, Spotify, YouTube, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Share this podcast with a friend and check out our newsletters. We have two of them. We offer one on LinkedIn and one straight to your inbox. They're amazing ways to keep adding to your skill set and growing your career. See you next week.